I'm Margot Pilatus. Welcome to Study English, IELTS Preparation. Today we're going to listen to a weather report. We're going to listen for numbers and practice saying and spelling them. Listen to the weather in Sydney. Good morning. It looks like being another glorious summer day in Sydney. Temperatures will range from a minimum of 16 degrees in Richmond and 17 degrees in the city, with maximum temperatures reaching the high 20s, with 29 in Richmond and 27 in the city by early afternoon. This summer promises to be the warmest since 1987. The average minimum for this time of the year is 15 degrees Celsius and the average maximum is 22. Humidity will be high again today, ranging from 80 to 90 per cent across the metropolitan area and possibly for the next five or six days. Sunrise will be at 5.45 a.m. and the sun will set at 7.43 p.m. The next full moon will be on December the 9th. For those interested in fishing and surfing, windy conditions will prevail all day with winds gusting from the southeast from 10 to 15 knots, then easing to 10 to 11 knots by late afternoon. Swells along all Sydney beaches will range from 1 to 1.5 metres. So counting and numbers are a very important part of language. You need them to talk about how much things cost, what you earn, telephone numbers, visa cards, passports, addresses and dates. Being able to listen for and understand numbers is an important academic skill. There are some conventions you need to learn and you'll need to do a lot of practice listening for and saying numbers. Let's get started. Listen to these pairs of numbers. 13, 30, 14, 40, 15, 50, 16, 60. Now you try these ones. 17, 70. 18, 80. 19, 90. They sound very similar. You need to listen carefully so that you don't get these mixed up. Temperatures will range from a minimum of 16 degrees in Richmond and 17 degrees in the city. Humidity will be high again today, ranging from 80 to 90 per cent across the metropolitan area. The temperature in Richmond is 16 degrees Celsius. The humidity is 80 to 90 per cent. Did you hear these numbers correctly? If you don't understand what someone said, ask them to repeat and stress the key syllable. And that will be $16. Did you say 16 or 60? Usually the first syllable in a number is stressed. 16, 60. Notice that it's the final N in teen that you have to be careful with. Teen, T. But of course when you're listening for numbers, you can often work out the correct amount by the context. Try to always be aware of what seems right, even if you didn't quite hear properly. Pronunciation of years can sometimes be difficult as well. Listen to the clip. This summer promises to be the warmest since 1987. 1987, 1987, notice where the stress comes, 1999, let's practice some more, 2001, 1932, 2040, or perhaps this will be read as 2040, I guess we'll have to wait and see. Notice 40 is spelt F-O-R-T-Y, not like 4 and 14. OK, now let's look at temperatures. Temperatures will range from a minimum of 16 degrees in Richmond and 17 degrees in the city. Temperatures will range from 16 degrees Celsius. We write that as 16 degrees Celsius with a capital C. If it was in Fahrenheit, we'd write 16 degrees Fahrenheit with a capital F. But in Australia, we use Celsius. So when giving a temperature range, it's written 16 to 17 degrees Celsius or 16 to 17 degrees Celsius. These are both read out the same way. Notice that the two is unstressed. 16 to 17 degrees Celsius. Now we're going to listen to a different weather report. 
Look at it written and see if you can work out what should be written in the blanks. Here is the weather report for Sydney today, Tuesday the 14th of November. The sun will rise at 5.15 and set at 6.45. The minimum temperature for metropolitan Sydney will be 13, rising to a maximum of 30 degrees Celsius. Humidity today promises to be high at 70 to 80 per cent. OK, let's have a look at that. The weather report for Sydney today, Tuesday the 14th of November. She said Tuesday the 14th of November. The sun will rise at 5.15 and set at 6.45. The minimum temperature for metropolitan Sydney will be 13, rising to a maximum of 30 degrees Celsius. Humidity today promises to be high, 70 to 80 per cent. How did you go with that? Remember, pronouncing final consonants will help considerably in hearing and understanding numbers. This is very important so that listeners understand what you say. Listen to the pronunciation of numbers here. Humidity will be high again today, ranging from 80 to 90 per cent across the metropolitan area and possibly for the next five or six days. She says five or six days. By linking final consonants with the first vowels of the following word, your speech will sound more natural. We say five or six, seven and eight, nine or ten. Okay, now let's listen for some times. Sunrise will be at 5.45 a.m. and the sun will set at 7.43 p.m. The next full moon will be on December the 9th. She says sunrise will be at 5.45 a.m. Sunset will be at 7.43 p.m. Notice the way we say the time. We say the hour and then the minutes as a whole number. And we add a.m. for morning, p.m. for afternoon. 5.45 a.m., 7.43 p.m. But there are a number of different ways of saying the quarter hours. We have 7 a.m. or 7 o'clock, 7.15 or quarter past 7, 7.45 or quarter to 8, 7.30, half past 7. Now let's listen to some more of the weather report. For those interested in fishing and surfing, windy conditions will prevail all day with winds gusting from the southeast from 10 to 15 knots, then easing to 10 to 11 knots by late afternoon. Notice that she says, for those interested in fishing and swimming. Interested here is a past participle, but it's used as an adjective. English verbs have two sorts of participles, present and past. So the regular verb to interest has interesting, interested, bore, boring, bored, tire, tiring, tired, excite, exciting, excited. When we want to say how we feel about something, we can use the past participle. I am interested in science. I am bored with reading. I felt tired after that walk. But when we're describing the qualities of a person or thing, we use the present participle. Science is interesting. A good way to remember these is to make sure you always write a table with the past and present participles together. You'll notice that the present participle usually ends in ing and the past participle ends in ed. But of course there are always irregular verbs to watch out for as well. And that's all for Study English today. Hope you keep practicing those interesting participles. They should keep you interested. See you next time. Bye bye. <laughs>